After my last video on the PS2P, I got a lot of questions from people wanting to know how to add ROMs to the unit, so I decided to follow up that video with a guide teaching you an easy way to add PS2 and PS1 ROMs to the PS2P. If you have any other questions that you'd like to see answered about this device, feel free to leave a comment below or connect with me on Instagram or Discord. I plan on doing a developer interview for this shortly, and I'll make sure to feature some of your questions in that video. The first thing that I'm going to address is what to do when you have a PS2 ROM that's too big for the file size limit of FAT32. I'm going to be using Resident Evil for this example since it's just over the 4GB limit. You're going to want to start off with a fairly big USB drive that's just been formatted into FAT32 and you're going to need an application called OPL Manager. In that application, you're going to need to set your OPL folder to the USB drive and this should generate a list of folders on the root of that drive. After this, you're going to need an application that can split ROM files into smaller chunks, and the one that I used in my review is called USB Util 2.2. Start off by clicking File, and then go down to Create Game from ISO. Change your destination on the right side of the window to the root of your FAT32 USB drive, and navigate to the ISO that you want to add in the source box on the left. A window should come up at this point, and your ROM will start splitting into 1GB chunks that can run on the PS2P. When you're done, your status on the list should be listed as BN if everything went smoothly. Now if you have an ISO that is smaller than 4GB, you can always drag and drop that directly onto your DVD directory and it will run on your PS2P. But I found it to be much easier to just use the USB util application for all ROM transfers, no matter the size. PS1 games require a different process that you're going to need to follow. Your first step is going to be to convert your PS1 ROMs into VCD format using a converter and that should give you the files you need to copy directly to your POPs folder on your USB drive. You will need to download your own POPs starter and POPs IOX file from Google. The final step is optional, but we're going to navigate back to the OPL manager to grab some cover art for our ROMs. To do this, head over to Batch Actions and then click on Art Download. The default settings in this window are perfectly adequate, but you could always download a background and screenshots, but it's going to increase the time that it takes to switch between games, so I suggest that you just stick with the cover, disc, and spine. Once you click Start, all of the art files will start to download from the internet and transfer directly to your USB drive. You can occasionally get a message that forces you to defragment the drive in order to get a game to run, so I have an application called Defragler that I've used to defragment the ROM files that wouldn't play on my system. If we head over to the PS2P, you can see that my ROMs have been recognized by the device, and I also have the cover art that we just downloaded using the OPL Manager. I can also navigate over to the right side to see the Crash 1 ROM file under the PS1 game menu. The only thing left to do is to hit launch on the game to make sure everything works correctly, which it should almost every time if you follow these steps correctly. You can also launch PS1 games in the exact same way, but they will be stretched by default. As I showed in my larger review, you can always flip the screen on the PS2P into 4x3 if you want the actual aspect ratio for the games that you're playing. Anyway, I hope this helps some of you. If you have any other questions about this device, feel free to leave them below. Talk you out.